Hi, welcome. We're at Horasis India Meet over here in the beautiful city of Athens and I have the pleasure of being with Parag Amin, the founding director and the chief mentor at iCreate. Welcome, Parag. Thank you. Thank you and for having me. And this is not your first time at Horasis. You're really one of the pioneers uh, uh, at Horasis, uh, aren't you? I am. I have been attending the Horasis events for almost 16 years now. 16 years. And right. how has it evolved in your view? Uh, Frank Richter uh, and I, uh, we have known each other uh, from the World Economic Forum days. Mm. Uh, he has come an extremely long way. His, uh, his whole vision of creating these uh, uh, small, tight, uh, very focused, uh, country-specific uh, uh, events uh, have been extremely successful. Mm -hmm. uh, meaningful interactions, uh, constructive dialogue, uh, result-oriented engagement mm. is uh, what the outcome of these uh, smaller meetings are. Everybody that comes here yeah. uh, comes with a purpose, comes with a mission. Uh, there is no uh, rhetoric or empty substance. Uh, what Absolutely. gets discussed uh, highly intellectual people talking about very material concepts and, and, and great forward progress uh, uh, ends up happening by, by, by the end of two days. Amazing, amazing events. And I'm not the only one saying that. Absolutely. You can speak to any attendees and they'll Absolutely. all tell you the exact same things. Fantastic. Now tell me one thing, you know, over here in Athens for the last few days, we've been having a lot of conversations uh, and you are a serial tech entrepreneur. Uh, and one of the big conversations has been, you know, in India, digital transformation has just boomed over the last few years. Uh, what have been some of your takeaways and what should Greece also look at? How can they, whether it's a partnership or some lessons from India's uh, digital transformation boom? So I am, as chief mentor of iCreate, one of my core functions, and iCreate is a, is a very large entrepreneurial ecosystem yes, created yeah. in Gujarat by then Chief Minister of Gujarat, Narendra Modi, who now is the Prime Minister of India. Uh, he visioned an institution that will nurture, mentor, and flourish entrepreneurs. Mm. It's a 40-acre campus, uh, uh, nearly 200,000 square feet of class A, world-class infrastructure with all sorts of technology labs and sandboxes that empowers a lot of entrepreneurs. Amazing. Uh, and what was the reason behind that? Because I heard there's a very interesting reason behind starting uh, iCreate. Yes, so six or uh, seven individuals had met the Prime Minister Modi back then, uh, Chief Minister Modi, uh, and uh, uh, had a conversation with him that India is going to add a million youth to the workforce mm -hmm. yes. for 36 years. This was 14 years ago. Right. Corporates cannot uh, create those jobs. <laughs> One million youth every month. Every month. Every month. Oh, wow. So there was no private or public enterprise in India, and there isn't one even today, that can consume that sort of workforce. Mm. So uh, Chief Minister Modi's uh, question to us was, uh, how can this problem be tackled? And collectively, the seven founders uh, had, had said to him that promotion of entrepreneurship mm. is, is one way of getting there. There are no models, and this is what we'll have to follow and that we wanted to start this incubator yeah. in a 3,000 square foot space. Wow. And the Chief Minister Modi laughed at us and said, uh, <laughs> when you have large dreams, large vision yeah. of changing a country, yeah. you can't do it with 3,000 3, square feet. Okay. So, so he is the one who envisioned the 40 acre campus and an international- Is it uh, one of the largest? It is probably the largest uh, uh, incubator center Incredible. in India in terms of mass and real estate. And We've had over 700 companies that yeah. have transitioned through the through the ecosystem so far. That's incredible. And you know, do you think something like that would work? A concept like that, uh, an incubator like that, would work in uh, in a place like Greece? So, where Greece should find a lot of solace in is last year during India's G20 presidency, uh, Prime Minister Modi. Uh, one of India's gift to the G20 was an initiative called S20. Startup 20. Right. Because India's startup ecosystem is so thriving, uh, right in line with the US and Israel, hmm. uh, amongst the top three ecosystems in the world, right. uh, we kind of wrote a template working with the Atal Innovation Mission and the Sherpa hmm. uh, of the conference. Uh, uh, and the S20 initiative was, was gifted to the G20 by India. Hmm. And iCreate was a secretary for, for the S20 initiative. Fantastic. This year with Brazil's presidency, the representatives uh, from the S20 are in Brazil this week 
wow. uh, basically empowering the Brazilian government in kind of igniting their entrepreneurial ecosystem. Right. So turbocharging so it the way it was done 100%, for India. 100%, uh, whether it's Greece, whether it's Cyprus, whether it's any other EU And nation. how is it done? Tell us a little bit more about it. How is it done? Is it by sending some of the entrepreneurs? Is it an exchange program? Is it sharing the frameworks of what has worked? It is, it is mainly sharing the framework because each country will have its own dynamic. It will have it. its own pushes and pulls. It will have its own constraints and its value systems. Hmm. But the key is uh, there are basic foundations that are required yes. to make sure that an entrepreneur succeeds. The building blocks. The, the building blocks. Failure is one of them. Ah, it, interesting. It, it's, it's one of the first stepping stones to success. Yes. And empowering a failed entrepreneur is mm. one of the first. In, in, our, in our business, in the business of incubation, mm. we say we don't bet on a horse. We mm. bet on a jockey. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, so it, it, it's, very, it's very cardinal that you empower the entrepreneur. If right. they fail at an idea, you kind of let them pivot, empower yeah. them, give them more guidance, give them more money, give them more vision, give them yeah. more ideas, and make sure that they succeed at their second or the third attempt. And you will be surprised how many times they actually do succeed. And both Greece and India have been very, very deep-rooted traditions. Correct. You know, very, very long, very illustrious histories, but also very traditional in some sense. When you're talking about failure or when you're talking about, you know, fail empowerment, that must have required a little bit of a mindset shift in it, India as well. It absolutely is. In India, entrepreneurship is not a line of business that your parents want you to follow. Correct. Uh, Correct. They want you to become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. Yes. Uh, a, a, gov banker a, a banker after that. A banker, a government employee. Yes. But a very stable uh, kind of like a job. Correct. where uh, you don't really have to worry about your future. Yes. The kind of, uh, and, and, and you can absolutely Google the iCreate website, it's iCreate.org. Uh, uh, iCreate.org. Dot in for India. And you will see the kind of entrepreneurs that have come out of there. I'll give you a couple of examples just to- Sure, make it real for us. Ju just, just kind of give you, give you the color and the light. Yes. We had a 14 year old kid mm. who came to us and said that I want to build a drone that mm. detects landmines. Mm -hmm. Actually, he was 11 when he came to uh, iCreate. He actually approached me at uh, one of the events that I was speaking at. Uh, between him uh, being 11 and he walking up to me with that idea, mm. to him being 14, and he presented his drone to Prime Minister Netanyahu and Prime Minister Modi when they visited iCreate. Wow. And this is all on the net. You can Google yeah. this and, and you can go on um, yeah. YouTube videos and stuff. Next day, Prime Minister Netanyahu is in Mumbai. He's talking to Indians, uh, in Indian business leaders. Mm. And he says, yesterday I met this 14-year-old kid that has built uh, a drone that detects landmines. Landmines, wow. He, he goes, I had a conversation with Prime Minister Modi and said to him that you should take this kid and build an industry around him. Wow. And, wow. and about 14 months later, India has a national drone policy. And wow. Prime Minister Modi's government has allocated 4,000 crore rupees wow. towards development of technologies in drone tech. That's incredible. Uh, a drone park is being developed in Dholera in okay. Gujarat. Yeah. And I create has proposed uh, to the government that we would empower 10,000 tribal women by teaching them how to fly drones. Wow. And we... we that call, really makes it real. We call the program Drone Ben. Uh, don't bend. <laughs> That's right. So, so the point I'm trying to make here is transformative things can be done yeah. if there's will and desire. Yeah. The Indian government has the will and the desire, and they're empowering their citizens to become uh, uh, the, the, the entrepreneurs that, that they would like to be. So that's one example. Second is we had this kid that uh, built a drone that uh, flies over a solar farm. Hmm and takes the reflective uh, heat index of the solar plates coming back and detects which plates are dead or dying. Wow. Uh, today, a human has to go in and, and test each plate. Wow. And here they have a drone that, that detects this. That's incredible. So a couple of examples that I just gave yes. you. Yes. But uh, Greece can have its entrepreneurs come to India, help yeah. solve India's problems, yeah. And we can absolutely have Indian entrepreneurs come to Greece yes. and, and pr produce solutions for, for Greece. Fantastic. What is your view, you know, just double clicking on that, 
Because there, of, India is, of course, a, a, a big enough market for an entrepreneur to thrive in. But if they were looking at geographical expansion, um, countries like France, very expensive, uh, the UK as well, could Greece be a potential uh, starting point, a jumping off point for entry into Europe, for POCs, for uh, product market fit, uh, in your view? Absolutely. So uh, I'll again give you another example talking about uh, technology and how advanced uh, India has gotten. Mm -hmm. In the fintech space, India has, the Indian government has developed a protocol, a financial protocol uh, called UPI, Universal Payment Interface. Yes. And uh, the QR are, code payment. The QR code payment interface. Right. There are seven countries in the world, including France, mm. uh, that has adopted to, uh, and Mauritius, that have adopted to this UPI payment uh, right. gateway. Uh, any European country can actually plug in and tie into this interface. Yeah. That will only bring the, the, the two economies, the two financial yeah. uh, behemoths and platforms closer together, right. empowering the entrepreneurs to create solutions for each other. Um, so, and, and, and uh, relatively speaking, mm. uh, Portugal and Greece are two more economical uh, uh, Options European to, to try. nations to, Absolutely. to kind, kind of uh, enter, and enter in, into Europe. So absolutely, Indian entrepreneurs, Indian startups, uh, yeah. even established businesses should consider Greece. I've uh, been here multiple times yeah. in my four-day career uh, that now I'm retired from. Uh, I work for the world's largest uh, cruise company and uh, every port in, in Europe I've visited and I've been to pretty much uh, every port in, in Greece Oh, fantastic, times. fantastic. So, We're definitely getting some advice from you on where to go. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the, the Indian culture, the Indian people, the Indian food, the, the Greek yeah. people, the Greek culture, it's, it's very aligning. It's, it's, it's a natural fit. Fantastic. And my final question, any words of advice to potential Indian entrepreneurs looking to enter Greece? Given you're a serial entrepreneur, you know, I think those words of wisdom will go a long way. At this conference, I've met uh, uh, several people from from the uh, the administration here in Greece. Uh, they are very open to working with India. Yeah. They're very open to working with Indian entrepreneurs. They have several programs. Um, they they are also working with uh, uh, Invest India uh, and, uh, and 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 trying to promote uh, cross border uh, business alliances. So any Indian company, be it a startup uh, or an established player that's willing and, and, and desiring to enter Europe uh, and, and is considering Greece, I think there's, there's, there's synergy. There's, there's a lot of uh, uh, support from the, the, the government here locally and uh, it'll be easy selling. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Parag, and a big thank you from the Hellenic India Chamber of Commerce and Economy. Thank big you so thank much you. for having me. Thank really you very it. much. Thanks. Thanks, Rish. Thanks.